Hey, what's up guys? So, um, in today's video, it's going to be another Overwatch coaching video. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at a bronze DPS player. So, it's going to be very interesting. I think it's the first bronze player we'll be looking at on the channel. Because I think so far we've just looked at silvers and golds. So, it'll be interesting. I could be wrong. I don't know. But, yeah, alright, let's hop right into it. <clears throat> Alright, so rolling out here, Junkrat isn't this is interesting team comps. Um, so I, I understand team composition, honestly, isn't that big of a deal in bronze. It's bronze. Um, really, all that matters is that you are competent on your hero. You know what you're doing. Um, you're able to get your job accomplished. So like if you're a DPS, you're getting kills. That's basically your job. And if you want to be a little bit more specific, if you're Junkrat, then you should be spamming chokes and breaking shields okay but you just need to have your hero's job down and then you pretty much climb out of bronze um but let's see <clears throat> so kind of interesting so i want to see some things first of all so the zen zen moira on the enemy team i've never seen that hero combo all right so enemy team is rather brawly you're kind of brawly so basically I know we probably at this point in the game don't know the entire enemy team's comp, but <clears throat> Star comp is kind of brawly, but not as brawly as the enemy teams because the enemy team has May Reaper, right? And uh, Reinhardt. So typically they should beat us out in a brawl. Granted, we have um, a wrecking ball, but still, you know, they should beat us out in a team fight, in a brawl team fight. <clears throat> so the goal should kind of be to keep them at range. I mean, we want our Reaper to be kind of close getting damage, but like overall, we should try and keep this team at range in order to um, beat them. So, all right, so we're just spamming choke. This is okay. Reaper's kind of coming in, didn't get much accomplished. Um, <clears throat> so rather than, I mean, right now spamming choke, this is okay. I mean, we're capping points, so we're holding them off. This is good. Um, we see the Reaper come to our left, and he's behind us, and we don't react. This is really bad. Alright. So, hold on. Let's go back just a sec. Alright. So. Whoops. And so we see this Reaper come in. We ignore it. We pipe over. And hold on. I, I'm curious as to how this ham is dying. I don't know if it's... Alright. <clears throat> so we're here, right? We're down there. Reaper comes in. We see him in our peripheral. And then we ignore him. We could have helped to kill him. Um, our concussion and mine kind of did the trick. But we should have helped finish that kill. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, but anyways, um, so this, this aggressive playstyle on Junkrat, playing aggressive on a Mei isn't a good idea. So basically, the, the problem with, um, you dove in on Orisa, right? So, we'll go back to that. Alright. That's not far back enough. Alright, here we are. So we're diving in on this Orisa, right? Um, we see the, we see the Reaper. We see Reaper, and he's pushing in, and then we concussion mine over to Orisa. So, there's nobody around, so this is okay, but typically we want to stay with our team. Um, we could have, instead of dive bombing Orisa, um, which we could have had this Reaper right here do, right? Um, Reaper could be attacking Orisa, and he could have killed Orisa. So if you're in comms, you could have called for Reaper to attack Orisa, and then you would have instead gained more value by, for one, helping your enemy team kill Reaper. Um... And then you can just spam this corridor right here. Like we see balls stuck in here. Balls balls dead. But we can spam this and get insane value. There's three people in here. We spam it. We pump it full of damage. We're going to charge our tire super fast and maybe even get some kills. So, but this is okay. It's just not maximizing value. And instead of, all right, so Arissa is by herself, right? So there's no reason to boop away. There's nobody coming to help her. Um, we shouldn't have instantly concussed your mind away. <clears throat> we should have 
Ben, uh, we should have fired some shots into her and let her die before concussion mining away instantly. If you're going to dive bomb somebody, at least shoot them once or twice before you're dive bombing away. Unless you absolutely have to get away uh, if it's, like, you know, a danger to your life. But uh, other than that, like, you could have stayed on the Orisa. Um, you know, you weren't threatened. Um, trap was not close enough. I see what you're trying to do. So the trap has to be right like it has to be touching the icicle in order for it to trap her right outside uh bad use of concussion mine <clears throat> all right so the may attacked us right um sorry i keep on going back but like there's a lot of things i want to see so we we screw up the the trap right um so whatever and then we choose to concussion mine away right and then, instead of, for one, we're really, okay, so there's a whole mess of things there. Our team was there, so luckily they cleaned it up, but, we could have, in this scenario, right, <clears throat> so we're shooting there, right, <clears throat> there's nobody there. We already saw them eh, go into this hallway, and we know she's wrapping around here, right? There's no reason to be shooting here, and also you reload again. I don't know why you're doing that. Um, it's a waste of time. And then when you finally flick over, you see the Zen and the Mei, right? So we should be pumping damage in and then conk mining away, right? Because this Mei is is kind of a counter. She freezes us, we die. Um, granted, we have teams, so this, this is fine. You end up winning, but, you know. That, that's a bad use of conk mine. We should have placed the conk mine on the ground. If you're putting conk mine right in front of you and then detonating it, it's just going to fly you in a random direction. We need to place it on the ground so we can get uh, air. Alright, we're spamming Winston. This is good. Like, we need a lot better use of our conk mines, right? <clears throat> There's no reason to push Reaper. There's absolutely no reason to push Reaper. Right, so... Reaper, we had him in that um, corridor, right? So when Reaper's in a corridor, like like this, he was he was over here though. So when Reaper's in a corridor, um, that is when he's our primary target, right? That's when he's, it's it, that's when it's the best time if you want to have a matchup with him to attack him, right? Um, and also keep him at range. Uh, don't push in on Reaper if you don't have to. Reaper has life steal. He excels at close range. If you push in close range, he's just gonna murder you. Unless you have him low enough HP that you can um, shoot and conk mine combo him. If you don't know what a shoot conk mine combo is, it's just where you primary fire and then instantly throw out a concussion mine or conk mine whatever and um, detonate it. It's very quick combo and it one shots all 200 HP targets. Um, but you have to land the the primary fire and then the conk mine has to be right on the player. Alright, but anyways, there was really no reason to push Reaper, um, so, don't, just as a general rule, try not to push people that excel in close range, because it's not like, unless you're going to do that combo on them, it's kind of pointless to push them, because it just gives them a better advantage and a higher chance of beating you. Alright, <clears throat> we're kind of just not moving in this corner, there's no reason. We're pushing once again, up, uh, we're in the back line, we should die here, yep. Alright. So, there's no reason to push. We don't need to be so aggressive on Junkrat, right? And also, if we're going to be aggressive, we want to do flanks. But we're, we're Junkrat, so there's no reason to push all the way up into their face, right? So, we're going to go back just a second. I want to show this from... Um... Alright. So, <clears throat> you're spamming, you're spamming. Here comes the Reaper. And you sit in the corner, right? <clears throat> Could be better, but this is fine. Kind of not getting value here. Um, and then we push all the way in, right? Look where our team is. Look where you are. There's a Moira, which not not going to do anything. This May is aimed right, right there. She can freeze you. She can icicle you. This Reinhardt, he's not going to drop shield, though, because, you know... Um, he's getting spammed and he'll die. But you got a Mei and you got a Zen that's going to discord you and start firing orbs at you. So you're kind of screwed. Um, 
This is a terrible position. There's no reason to push this aggressively, right? Our team's back here. We're a shield spammy hero, right? Like, like I said, with Junkrat, you just need to get down your basic job. And your basic job is to spam shields, right? And to just put damage into chokes. So there's no reason for you to push up this aggressively. Um, this is just throwing away our life. This isn't adding value to our hero. Um, cause you're running in, right? You're hitting the, you hit the Rhyme like once, but like as you're pushing in, like you're nailing his shield, right? His shield's about to crack. Once his shield's down, you can spam all these people. They're just going to get pumped full of damage and your team can push in. Your Hammond can go in and you can get a bunch of value. But like right here, this is just invitation to dying. So, and then we do, as you see, we get laser pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then their team should take fight, I believe. We shall see. Okay, this is kind of a mess. Um, your team is going to retake it, looks like. Hmm, interesting. Alright. Yeah, okay. And then you come in. Alright, okay. Um, and then you come in. Alright. That shouldn't have happened. That should have been a clean take for blue team, but whatever. I mean, good for us, right? <clears throat> All right, so right here, we're not really getting value. We have, we seem to have no idea what we're doing. There's no reason to sit this far back, right? <clears throat> when we've won a fight, we push up, we take ground. Like, ideally, when we win the fight and we take this choke right here, we want to push up to either this left... What happened to Zen? Jesus. Um... We want to push up to either this left choke or this right choke, right? We want to take ground once we've... Okay. Um, once we've won. Once we've won fight. So there's no reason to stay this far back. I know I said earlier, you know, in a team fight. But once we've won that team fight, we can definitely push up. So, you know. Alright, but anyways... um. So you want to, you know, maximize value in bronze. That's kind of how we get out of it. Um, is by maximizing value by playing, you know, to the best of your ability. Just really, you need to maximize your value at all at all times, right? So playing this far back, it doesn't get value. We need to push up, be more aggressive. As a whole, like, <clears throat> when your team's being aggressive, you play aggressive with them, okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, just join the bandwagon. But this, just sitting back here, you're getting nothing accomplished. You already have tire charge, but you could maybe get some kills, you know? Very poor reaction. Mm, mm, mm. Alright. Let's take a step back there. See from all perspectives, right? So, they get a pick. This Reaper's coming in left side, right? They've kind of corralled us. Here comes Reaper with his ult. So, typically the play, when you are fighting against a Reaper, right? Unless you have a definitive area to knock him into, don't use a Conk Mine to knock him, right? Sigma luckily accretions him, but if you would not have accretioned him, you, uh, or at least from what I saw, you Conk Mine him into... Lucio, Moira, Sigma, they all die. That's a 3k, you've lost fight, right? So don't conk mine reapers unless you have, unless you know that you're knocking them away where they will get less value than they already would have gotten. But here, they would honestly probably get less value than if you were to conk mine them over to Moira, Lucio, and uh, Sig. They wouldn't fight anyways, but you know, it's just a general rule. Also, so instead of conk mining, right? Either spam him with your uh, primary fire, or uh, place a trap as close as you can possibly get to him, right? Because, or if he's traveling a straight line, you'll put a trap somewhere. I, I don't know, but like, you know, put put a trap. Try and get a trap down if you can. Typically you can't, but if you have that opportunity, place a trap down. Because if you can stop Reaper from moving with his Death Blossom, then it just gives your team a chance to remove themselves from the area, and then he won't get value, assuming, you know, your team's not too close. So anyways, he does this, he gets 
you know, you conk mine away. And then you come back in and you tire after everybody's dead into two shields and you get no value. So typically when you're using alts, right? Don't um, alt if you're down by like two or three, right? If you're down and it's not a winnable fight, like that fight was not winnable unless you hit like a five man tire or something like that. Or you would have had to at least get three, right? Because three people were dead, you would have to get at least three to even it back up. And it was not possible to get a three-man tire there, so it's a waste of tire. We're pushing in, we're trickling in. This is what's called trickling in. We've lost the fight and we're still trying to stall for no reason. We should not cap here, we should die, yep. Alright, so... I know you're in low ranks, so it's not, you know... Alright, so I apologize for, um... All the pauses and stuff and all the... Um cuts that need to be made because I keep on having to stop recordings for various reasons but um anyways back to what I was saying so trickling in right it's not I understand this is bronze and what are you doing um all right we'll get back to that so anyways I understand this is bronze and I understand that you know positioning in game sense is not basically existent but at the same time trickling in you know, it happens, it, and it really should not. It don't contribute to the group, right? If you have somebody, if you have, like, one or two people that are going against six, just to try and, like, take point even after it's been taken, right? You know, if it's stalling, then that's different. But if you're just going in just to die and feed ult charge when the point's already taken, there's no reason to do that. So... Don't contribute to the group. We did it last team fight. We just went in and died and fed all charge. So don't try not to do that. Alright, so what are we doing in Are we AFK? Um Okay. Uh this is very dangerous. Alright, so this whole conk mining in thing is extremely risky, and not only is it risky, but it's pointless. Doesn't get you value, and it's different if you're coordinated, right? If you're going in, you have a coordinate, you have coordination with maybe your um, dive tanks, which you don't have any dive tanks currently. But like, if you have some coordination with team members, or you know what you're doing, that's a waste of tire. We've already won team fight. Um, we should have used tire for like later on, um, but whatever. I mean, it's basically last team fight, so I guess it's okay. Um, but anyways, we want to wait for uh, team coordination, right? And we don't want to just dive in by ourselves because if we're diving in by ourselves, especially if we don't have a designated target, because every time you dive, it's different if you have, well, it's somewhat different. If you have a target that you're going for, and you know that you're gonna combo some uh, conk mines and some primary fires to kill them quickly. But you're just conk mining in just cause you can. And you're not getting anything accomplished. Typically, you're just feeding alt charge, or you're not killing anybody and you're wasting cooldowns. Um, we need to have a definitive like idea in mind we can't just conk mine in and be like, uh -huh, I'm gonna shoot random things, right? Like, if we're dive bombing in on like a support and then getting out very quickly, then that's okay. In the higher ranks, it's not because you'll get focused down, but in bronze, it's honestly a good thing. Because they won't expect it, and you should be able to get out because everybody's mechanics isn't up to par, so they shouldn't be able to punish you, right? But right now, you're just conk mining in and getting no value, so... If we're going to dive bomb people, at least dive bomb one specific person and make sure you know how you're going to kill them and how you're going to get out before you even initiate the dive. Because here it is again, we're just dive bombing in for no reason. We don't need to play high ground. We don't need to play high ground as Junkrat. We're 1v1ing a Hanzo. This is not a good idea. Hanzo should beat us. Okay, there we go. Okay, that was good. We should have dive bombed him a little bit earlier. But kind of right now, we're not... Okay, this actually works. It could have been a little bit cleaner. We didn't need to play high ground and let Hanzo get a shot in on us. Like, if we want to dive bomb Hanzo, right? We could have just played the ground fight, right? 
stuck with our team, um, broke shields, and then when Hanzo, uh, when we see the Hanzo up top, we could have die bombed him and killed him with a, uh, we could have conk mined up and then shot conk bind out and killed him in the same swift motion instead of, uh, one of you wanting him. Alright, pulling out the Hanzo, this is gonna be interesting. Little bit better awareness for the Hanzo up top. We could have had, um, we could have had the you know, game sense to react to that. We saw him in our peripheral vision up top and just didn't react, so he got a free dink. It's unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Right now, I think we've lost. Oh no, they're investing ults though. All right, so. This ground fighting is Hanzo, right? It's okay, but we would get a lot more value if we were to play high ground, like here, yep, or over to our left. But this is... Alright, there's no reason, so... A lot of... Alright, you died here, but the, the main thing I want to highlight is actually what happened just a few seconds ago. So... A lot of Hanzos don't understand the importance of Sonic Arrow. So you're burning Sonic Arrow for kind of no reason, right? Here, we see both the tanks very clearly. It's not like they're hiding behind any walls. We don't need to use Sonic Arrow here. Sonic Arrow is a very powerful ability. It gives you wall hacks on certain areas, right? And if anybody peeks, then you should be able to dink them, assuming you have the aim, right? So it's basically just, it locks down whole areas, right? And then the low ranks... People normally won't um, act like it locks them down, and if you have the good aim, you can just punish them and, you know, line up headshots all day. Um, but anyways, we don't, I, I think you don't understand the importance of Sonic Arrow yet, which you will, but it's a very powerful ability, right? So burning it when we see both targets is kind of pointless. If you're using it in a sniper duel, right, where it's like both snipers are peeking, maybe you're 1v1ing a Widow or a Hanzo, and you need that Sonic Arrow in order to peek them and get a shot in, then that's okay. But when we're just spamming tanks, it's no reason. It's just a waste. So let's try not to waste it like that. All right, we're climbing up top. This is all good. Gucci Gucci right and then we're shooting the Hanzo and then Sonic Arrow we swapped the Sonic Arrow here and instead of shooting the wall um, to see the Hanzo which we don't really need to do he's kind of low we we could beat him without Sonic but you know it, it's worth it to use it right so we've decided we're going to use it but instead of um, using it on the wall for walls on him so that we can uh, hit him when he peeks we just try and use it like a normal arrow to shoot him and then we yeet it all the way into traffic back in the back um right like all the way over here where it gets no value whatsoever so let's try you know to use sonic arrow for its intended purpose don't use it to shoot people um unless you know it's generating to value there which rarely it does try to use it to shoot walls and objects and stuff like that instead um so we waste sonic arrow here right there it is and then you eat it all the way into traffic and then you die so that could have been avoided possibly if you had a sonic arrow on the wall and then you hit him every time he peeked but it's whatever all right i have two picks i'll be surprised if they don't win the fight but then i'm gonna keep on getting surprised so. wow okay it's a waste it all coming out from blue hanzo Right. So here's what I oh, okay, I'm not trickling in. This is very risky play. There's no reason to be peak fighting this Hanzo here, right? Because if he dies, you know, oh, yeah, your team's not even very much assembled, and now we're dove and dead. Possibly. Okay, never mind. But anyways, there's no reason to peak fight Hanzo that early, right? Because we didn't have our team assembled. If we had our team assembled, it'd be a little bit different. But we didn't have our team assembled. So it's kind of just like... It's kind of just like, you know, higher risk than reward. If we died there, 
then that's a whole like another 20 seconds their team has to wait and it would have taken 10 seconds for them to um get together anyways so it's like 30 seconds that you would have wasted if you would have died and if you would have killed him he would be back before your team was ready so it's it's kind of pointless and you already have your dragon strike so it's not like you're getting any ult charge so try not to play risky unless you have to right unless it's getting value there's no reason to play um flanks or like 1v1 people when your team's not even ready to push um so just try and tone that down a little bit but all right so we got sigma fluxed we should go for the health pack and not 1v1 the sigma we're dead all right so there's a health pack like right here I don't know why I didn't just drop back to the health pack. We could have dropped back to health pack, and we would have survived, most likely, because Sigma c couldn't aim at all until he hit his accretion. And we probably would have won that fight. So. Alright, we have Dragon Strike. Let's try and combo this, right? So we could combo it. The best combo I can think of right now our team would be with the sigma flux all right there's no reason to push in like this is what i mean with trickling in right they've won the fight they've already pushed up and you guys are still pushing and acting like it's an actual team fight it's not you're just throwing your life away um but let's try and combo ults so if you're in chat you can tell your orissa to use her pool right so can i go to orissa there we go so her pool um she can pull everybody together right and then you uh dragon strike them that could be huge value and if you're not in chat you know then get in chat uh <laughs> if nobody's in chat then that's unfortunate but try and coordinate with your sigma if you can't coordinate with orissa and try and get a flux and then you dragon strike um right before they get slammed down so that anybody that lives you know they can get uh they'll get striked by dragon and they'll all die so but try and combo your ults. Comboing ults is a it's a big part of Overwatch, right? It's typically a thing that I would say to like a platinum or a gold player that's having trouble climbing, but honestly it can be really valuable in bronze. Um although I want you to make sure that you you have down uh we'll see what you do with your ultimate, but I want to make sure you have down um how to get value out of your ultimate by itself first and what your ultimate should be accomplishing because some bronze and silver players don't have that down yet, and so I don't want to overcomplicate things, but we'll see. Kind of just taking damage, taking the high ground. All right, this is fine. All right. This is not... Okay. So we got a pick, right? But... It could have been bigger value. Like I said, if we were to combo ults. And also, actually, I'm going to go back. I want to show... Oh, it seems like there's a third point to this. Alright, so. So. We're going, we're going, we're going. We take the high ground. We're ready to use this dragon strike. So, instead of using it from high ground, high ground, it comes at an angle, right? So, we see the team... We could have, they're kind of unaware. Actually, no, 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 the Sigma, Sigma sees us. But, you know, Sigma's the only one that sees us, and we could have zoned them. Because Dragon Strike, right, with a combo, it's meant to be a team wipe. But by itself, it's meant to be a zoning ult. If you get a bunch of kills off of it, great, if you can. But if not, then you should use it to zone the team in. So a better play, instead of just solo, um... Instead of just ulting here and hoping that it kills people, would have been for you to drop down here, right? Drop down here, and then you ult so that it crosses across this area. It locks their team off, because if they back up, they're taking Dragon Strike damage. And then your team is free to just go in and brawl them. Because you have you have Reinhardt, Lucio, your Reaper's not doing his job, but whatever. Um, You know, it, it's better than what you did. So... Try and zone them if you're solo ulting with Dragon Strike. But all right, but anyways, we get the pick and then we drop down and then we die to Sigma. Just unfortunate. All right. Hmm. Yes. 
Alright, going for Tracer for stall was a good try, but unfortunate. Main reason we lost that last point was because team was not coordinated, A, and B, you guys kept on trickling in, right? So if you keep on trickling in with your team, you all are just gonna, you're all gonna die and it's, you know, you're just gonna feed ults. Feed ult charge, enemy team will get their ults faster. And if you keep on trickling in every fight, then they'll have their ults every team fight. <laughs> so. Alright, we're going in as Bastion. This is very... Alright, so Bastion is not the play here, right? If we want... I, I'm assuming what you're going to do, and we'll see. <clears throat> so I'm assuming what you are going to do is go high ground, and then you're going to try and just laser beam everybody before they get to you, right? It would be better, in that case, to play something like Soldier or McCree that is a bit more self-sustainable. Because Bastion, he requires shields, right? He requires shields to play around. And right now you have a Sigma with a 900 HP shield and a ball. That's not really enough. Um, typically, you want to play Bastion with either Arissa Sig or at least a Reinhardt. Either Devil Shield or you have to basically have a Reinhardt, right? Or... Um, but you can't play it without shields, and also it looks like you're going to go branch away from your team, and yes, you are. So, there's really no reason to play Bastion here. Better pick would have been Soldier, because he's a bit self-sustainable with his biotic field, or McCree, because he can, you know, he can flashbang, for example, the Winston on the enemy team, um, when he dives him, and then he can get away. Uh, <clears throat> and also, we know, you know, we know from the past rounds of this map that the enemy team has a Hanzo, they got a Junkrat, they got a Winston, um... All that stuff kind of counters Bastion, especially if you have no support from your team. Because if they dive you, right, uh, they're just going to murder you, right? The the junk rat, he can kamikaze you, he can dive bomb you. Um, you have no Baptiste on your team for immortality. So if he dives you and just spams all his cooldowns and primary fires on you, he'll kill you. Um, and even if you kill him, it's worth it. Uh, and then Hanzo can just pick you down from range, you know. It's, it's just all around, it's not a good idea. But we'll see. Alright, here we go. We're doing a... F this is the worst way or, uh, area we can play Bastion because Junkrat's just going to pick us out. Alright, challenging a Junkrat like that in a hallway, that's just blatant stupidity. Um, I don't really know why we did that. But, whatever. Alright, and we're still rolling out on the Bastion. Like, the enemy team, you gotta realize, right, when an enemy team hard counters you. And I know counterpicking is not that big of a deal in Bronze, but it is gonna have some impact. And when you notice that, alright, this is just trickling in. Once again, we're feeding. No reason for us to do the enemy team's not reacting. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, then. Alright, I've never seen that happen. I mean, I guess this is bronze, so no offense, but, like, I've literally never seen that happen. Good job, I guess. Um, typically, I'd say that's a risky play and you're feeding, and typically that would be feeding because the Sig, or the um, Reinhardt would have just flipped around and stuff, you know. Everybody would have focused you, but, okay, I guess this works. Um, Alright. Yeah, anyways, we need to notice, so this time it seems to be working because the enemy team's a bit unaware, but, um, overall, we need to notice when the enemy team counters us, right? And this time, they're kind of too unaware, so you're getting value, so, you know, keep going with it. Great job. But, um, if we notice that the team is ever countering us like they did in the beginning, um, and we can't seem to get value, then we should swap our hero, because typically it's going to be that. It's either that or your mechanics are just terribly bad, but normally it's that you're getting counterpicked. It's, uh, if you're not able to find value and you're constantly dying. Unless it's a mechanical or positioning issue, it's typically counterpicked. So. Just try and recognize, be able to recognize what comps counter your hero and whether or not the enemy team's running those heroes slash comps. And typically it's going to be heroes. So like Bastion, right? You're getting value right now, so it's fine. But um, typically... Junkrat counters him, right? Typically Winston counters him. Really anything divey that is somewhat coordinated will counter him. 
Um, unless you're playing really bunker-like with your team. Uh... You know. And then, for your other heroes, a hero that would... Uh, things that would counter Hanzo is hard dive when it's coordinated and, um, and then for, uh, Junkrat, it would either be hard dive that's coordinated or, um, a long range comp with, like, for example, uh, double sniper or snipers of some sort, just anything ranged, you know. Alright, so I want to go back, um, to how we died, so, we're sitting in this corner, right? Drinkrat's getting picks. Here comes Zen with trans. Now, as soon as this um, Zen trans is right, we're not going to win. We're not going to kill anybody in his trans, so there's no reason to stay there, right? So the better play would have been to reposition either over here, or go to high ground, or um, back out to your team over here. I, I don't know. But like literally anywhere but here, because you're in a corner and you're just going to get spammed full of damage by the junk rat and the tracer and the moira right there's nothing you can really do because zen has his trans going off so you can't kill anybody in trans um so there's really no reason to stay here we should have repositioned um that's why we died but yeah so looks like their team doesn't take a point then there's only two minutes left all right um Oh, okay, or they do. Never mind. Alright. So, going in this hallway, this is how we lost last time, or the first team fight, but. And, yep, we're dead. So, with Junkrat, right, on the enemy team, if you're still gonna play Bastion, you're still getting value, so I, I guess keep it. But, if you're gonna play Bastion against a Junkrat, right? Or any hero against a Junkrat for that matter. Uh, don't play in hallways. Because that is where Junkrat excels. He doesn't have to have any remote aiming ability. He just needs to spam the hallway. And some of his mines will hit you. And they're going to get insane damage and value. And he's going to charge his ult super fast. And all that good stuff. So don't play in hallways if there's a Bastion. We're still... What the hell? We can't get over that. Why are we... Okay. Um, We're still playing in hallways. This is... And we have Sigma supporting, this could work. <laughs> Fine art misses his charge. <laughs> okay. But, um... Yeah, just try not to play into enemy team's, uh... Strengths, right? This is good, though. So... Excuse me. So, you know, typically, th this play style of yours on Bastion would not work, like, at all. Like, this is easily hard counterable, but this is bronze. So, basically, run things until it they don't work, right? So, if you're getting value out of being a flank Bastion, then be a flank Bastion. But, you, it's gonna be hard, because once you get into a rank, like, for example, gold, you're gonna be countered. So, and you're not gonna be able to do that. So... I guess play this flank Bastion right into teams that it works, but be able to notice if it doesn't work. Because this time it worked, and I don't want to tell you not to do something if it's working well for you, right? So, um, if this flank Bastion keeps on working for you, then great, keep running it. But if it, teams start to counter it, and they will more as you climb, um, then you're going to need to uh, change your play style, right? You won't be able to flank like that. You're not going to get value, and there will come a time when that you won't get value out of that. So, just be able to realize when it's not working and when you need to swap. But um, other than that, the Flank Bastion, honestly, I've never seen anything like that, and it worked out extremely well for you. So, you know, uh, keep doing it until it doesn't work. Uh, but main issues were with Hanzo. We didn't understand the value of Sonic Arrow, and we didn't understand how our um, ultimate works, right? 
And with Junkrat, we didn't understand how our ultimate works too well either. So, Thons are right. There's different ways to use. Uh, for for first of all, Sonic Arrow, that has that has to be finding value every time you use it. You can't just throw it away. It, it takes 12 seconds to get it back. It's a very important cooldown. You can't just throw that thing. Um, so let's try and get more value out of that. Uh, but anyways, with Hanzo's ult, as I said previously, um, his ult gets value when you either Dragon Strike with a combo, right? For example, like a grab from Zarya, and it's a team wipe. Or you can use it to zone enemies and lock people off from a team fight and stuff like that and split the enemy team up, right? So we need to make sure that if we're solo ulting with it or solo ulting in the back line, that we're using it for zoning and not just like trying to get kills randomly. Because like we ulted into a Sigma that was kind of away from it and a junk rat that decided to not use a conk mine to get away. And a Winston that can always bounce away. So, like, when we used it on, um, oh, uh, what, what's the point called? I don't know. I, uh, but we used it on, a, uh, one of the points on Oasis, right? And, uh, it only got the Junkrat killed because the Junkrat was kind of unaware and everybody else kind of just bounced, right? So, try and use it for zoning more often. You're going to get more value, um, especially when your team's there to follow up. Um, and then with Junkrat, same thing with Junkrat's ult, honestly. Um, unless you have the enemy team unaware and you can get a lot of kills with it, or they're close and you can get kills with it, right? Or you can combo with something, um, like for example, a Graviton, uh, or a Orisa pool. Um, you know, if you can't combo, you can also use Riptire to zone because... What do teams do? They either try and shoot the tire or they run away from it. Typically in the lower ranks, people are going to run away from it. And they might run away from it and shoot at it. But honestly, if you drive it in a weird pattern, you know, like zigzag it around here, I can... Uh, well, I'm talking, you know. Uh, so if you're able to drive it in a zigzaggy pattern, you can sometimes make it so that enemy teams can't... Uh, hit your tire right so and then you can still get value and you'll zone it because the tire has a um you know it, it lasts for 10 seconds before it uh automatically detonates so uh you can use it for those 10 seconds to back a team off of point i've seen a lot of plays where people back it off of point uh back whole teams off of point and stuff like that just by using tire right so if we pop our tire right we can run in a zigzaggy pattern. We, you know, and it'll mess up. For example, if a widow's looking at it, like she won't be able to hit it. Um, CarQ does a pretty good video on junk rat tips. I would recommend watching that. He has a lot of things like that and how to get value on um, him and how all of his abilities work and what they should be doing. But um, anyways, so you can use it for zoning. You can use it to combo. Um, but try and understand the um, importance of your ultimates and what they do. Uh, and then also the importance of your cooldowns. I think that's a very big part of why you're still in bronze. You don't really understand the value of your ultimates and what they're used for. And you don't understand the value of some cooldowns and what they're used for. So I try and get uh, work on that, you know. Um, try and have a definitive idea in mind before you execute uh, your idea, right? So like with Junkrat, there's a lot of times where you would conk mine in and then you would just, you know spam random things and conk mine in or just conk mine in and instantly conk mine out without shooting anything and it wouldn't not only it wouldn't get value but it also um would just waste both your conk mines and then you'd kind of be immobile if anything else happened or if you got dove so try to make sure you have a plan if you're gonna dive bomb for one make sure you are dive bombing not as often as you were because you weren't getting value you're doing it to the point where it was not there's no point to doing it but if you're going to do it um, then make sure you have a target, you know how you're going to kill that target quickly, and how you're going to get out. So, like, let's say there's a Mercy in the back line, right? Your junk rat, um, up in the front line, just spamming shields, and you see that Mercy that's a bit far back. You could conk mi use a conk mine, bounce over to her, shoot, conk mine out, right? That kills her, and boops you away in the same motion, right? So... Just make sure you have a plan, and that goes for the majority of heroes. Make sure you have a plan of what you're going to do before you do it. Because if you don't have a plan, you things are going to get fucked up, right? You're going to mess something up. You don't, you know, you have nothing to go off of. 
So you're kind of just doing things randomly if you don't have a plan, right? And more likely than not, you're going to fuck it up and you're going to die. So just try and get a plan. So main three things. Get a plan. Understand what your ult is uh, used for and the value of your ultimate. And understand what your cooldowns are used for and what the value of those cooldowns are. But, um... Yeah, so, guys, thanks for watching this video. Um, I hope you learned something out of it, uh, and have a good day. Peace.